everyone, it's Alicia. I'm back in my piano studio just because it's really easy to sit down and talk to you guys when I've already been filming in my piano studio area. I don't need to like move anything or set anything up. I've got some kid toys sitting beside me on the piano bench that you can't see right now, thankfully. But what I wanted to sit down and talk to you today about is organization. And I feel like I have... I don't want to say like expertise in this arena, I, I really don't feel that way. But I am a pretty organized person, especially in the last couple of years I've really fine-tuned some of the systems I've been developing for the last decade. And I do have people comment to me often, including one friend who bugged me to, um, he, he didn't bug me, he just like politely asked me to share some organizational advice because he feels like I ha have things put together all the time, which is hilarious. <laughs> It's not true at all. But I have probably a lot of different things that I can talk about when it comes to organization. And as such, I wanted to kind of explore this in a series. And today, the one aspect of my organizational life that I wanted to address is my notebook. <laughs> so before getting into this, why should you listen to me about organizing anything? What do I know? Like, who am I? What does it matter? Um, I'm, I just, uh, so here's, here's my disclaimer. Um, I'm a parent, so that alone is, is, it gives you the necessity to be organized. I'm also, uh, like, so I'm a stay-at-home parent, but I'm also self-employed. I run my own business. And those two things put together mean that basically if I'm not super on top of my day-to-day -day life, that everything gets very out of control. If I went to a job, that order would usually, like most people who, who have a job, are given the order. They're given the hours that you show up at this time and you finish it this time. They're given the assignments, the projects. Now since, uh, since I don't go to a job, I don't have those assignments given to me. I have to do everything myself. And I also, like the same is true with being a stay-at-home parent. It's basically like, how do I run the household? Um, how do I keep things organized? How do I stay on top of cleaning? How do I make sure we always have good food to eat? Um, and, and, you know, what can we do out and about, like, so that we're not just sitting at home all day? Um, what friends can we spend time with? Can we go there? Like, activities, etc. So, those are two major reasons that I've had to become pretty good at being organized. Because, yeah, otherwise my life would descend into chaos. And especially, I talked about this in the last video, but becoming a parent was huge for me in terms of becoming more organized and stepping up my game. And that's why I say that in the last couple of years I've really improved and made some significant gains in that regard. And it's just because I've been a parent for about a year and a half now. So, okay. So the notebook. Um, this is no ordinary notebook, but it's actually a pretty cheap one. It is, it has like a little stamp on the back. The brand is Pentalic. And the reason I, I love these notebooks so much is because they are blank. And they're huge. So these books are, I believe, eight and a half by 11. And uh, yeah, there's no lines or any anything like that on the page. The other thing is that the binding is really nice. So even though it's uh, it's got kind of, I don't know what you call this binding. Ah, I have something in my eye. I'm also just melting. It is a hot summer day and the sun is pouring in through the window, which you also can't see, but it is, I am, I am melting. Okay, so anyway, the binding um, lays really well. So like it, it actually lays flat, even though it's, um, even though it's kind of like book binding. So like whether you're in the middle or like, it just, it, the binding is really, really nice. And this book has taken a beating. I've taken this thing out to the garden with me. My child has used it. And you can tell it's, it's got some wear and tear. But here's what I do with this. I use one of these a year. And I actually might run out of this before the year ends because we're already, we're what, on month seven? And I've used, I don't know if you can kind of see, <laughs> see if I can hold this for you. The thicker part is how much I've written and then the thinner part is how much is left in it. So I do have a backup notebook. I believe these are like around $20, it's like among the best $20 you'll ever spend. Okay, so why is this notebook such a crucial element of organization? I used to keep all of my lists and random ideas and notes to myself and, and whatever, just kind of in a bunch of different places. It was, maybe I would take a note on a piece of paper here, maybe I'd write something on my computer there and maybe, you know, it, it gets so that you have things in about 12 different places. 
And I found that that was super confusing and I never knew when, where to find anything. So I just said, screw it, I'm gonna put everything all in one notebook. And so like, just for, maybe I can show you some of this afterwards, but one thing I do is, uh, I don't know if you can see on this page, but this is basically like the month of March. And it was all of my things that I wanted to accomplish in the month of March. So that's one way I would use these pages. Another way would be to, <laughs> I was counting how many books I'd read that I could actually like validate that I'd read in uh, various different categories. It was just kind of a fun random thing I decided to do. Um, I do I do lists of 10 things a lot. This is something that James Altucher talks about, about generating ideas and becoming good at ideas. It's just practicing the idea muscle. So coming up with 10 ideas each day. I don't do it every day, but it is kind of a fun thing. So you can see we have some lists of 10 ideas. Um, those are kind of like scattered throughout the book. Um, let me see here. Oh yeah, lots of lists. Oh, okay, and this was um, when I was setting up the piano convention. I was going through a course actually to help me get organized and figure out how to do the convention. I didn't just figure it out on my own. So it's taking notes from, it's basically like online courses. More lists, more lists. I will sometimes intersperse with calendars. This was my um, convention calendar, so I had a sense of what I wanted to get everything done by, timelines. So there's a lot of work stuff in here, but then there's random stuff like 10 predictions for Game of Thrones season eight. There's another 10 list. Um, yeah, my list didn't come true. It wasn't very accurate. <laughs> uh, oh, and um, 10 places I really want to visit, more notes and so on. Yeah, so there's just, oh, and then here's all my gardening stuff. At the start of the gardening season, I created lots of charts and took lots of notes when I was learning about gardening. Um, I've been keeping track of what plants are in my garden. These are my really ugly, messy, dirty, <laughs> it's like I actually feel a film of dirt from taking this out of the garden. But these are my, my plots and I kind of planned out what's in there. So um, yeah, the reason I'm showing you all of this stuff, oh, um, habits, this is like a personal development thing, but these are like habits that I think are worth developing over a longer period of time. So I just wrote a list of habits that are good to have. Uh, and then I have a whole bunch of notes from when I was doing the convention, when I was talking to people. Um, sometimes I'll do like a stream of consciousness writing. You'll see this is just like a page of writing and words and thinking. Um, so that's kind of like journaling. I don't usually do a lot of journaling in here. I actually have a file on my computer. So this isn't where everything that I ever write ever lives. It's where most things live. And um, I don't really believe in like fancy task managers or like agendas or things like that. I think for the most part you can get by with a few tools and one of the tools is a notebook for like all lists and stuff like that. Um, plus it's, it's in order. It's easy to remember like if I have things all in one place and I'm like, oh, I had this one random idea and I know it was probably in February or March, then I know if I flip to like near the beginning of the book, I'll find it somewhere. So it is nice to have everything in one place like that. But with journaling, which I do not every day, but I'm pretty, pretty vigilant about it. I usually write about 40,000 words a year or more. That's my goal with, with journaling, but I have one word document. That's my entire journal for the year. And again, I want to keep everything in one place. So my journal isn't one place. It's a word doc and that's it. And I have one notebook for like all my lists and thoughts and ideas. That's in one notebook. Finally, I have an Evernote notebook. Evernote is just like a note taking program. Um, any random ideas I have I'll, like on the internet when I'm using the computer, I'll use Evernote for those. And um, also in Evernote, I keep track of my goals, my weekly reviews. These are all things I can talk about in the future. Um, but between the notebook, oh, and there's one more, I'll have to mention that. So between the notebook, between Evernote, my Word document journal, and then an app I use called Nosby. Nosby is just a to-do list app, um, but it's pretty robust. It has a lot in common with David Allen's very famous book, Getting Things Done, which I found really, really inspirational. If you want to organize your life and your workspace, that, that book is just like totally classic. It changed how I do everything. Um, 
I do do quite a few things differently than David Allen suggests because I've had many years to work with that system. I think I've been using David Allen's system for like a decade. So I've definitely made adjustments, especially modern adjustments because I don't use a lot of paper anymore aside from this. But most of the things I have are online now. Um, but Nosebe is a paid app and it allows you to, uh, again, this is something I should do an entire video on, but it allows you to program in like projects you're working on. Um, it's a really easy to use, but fully functional to-do list thing. So for today's to-do list, I have like cleaning tasks and I have recording this video and other things like that. And they're all kind of sorted into their own projects. I can estimate how long they'll take so I can look at my day as a whole and say like, okay, seven and a half hours to do everything I need to do today. Check. Good. Um, it's a, it's a wonderful app. So that is it. That's like my entire organizational system. And again, I've experimented with agendas and fancier things and fancier online journal tools and different notebooks, but the best, and I guess this is the point of today's video, but the best notebook that I've ever found and ever used is the Pentalic eight and a half by 11, no lines, and yeah, the other one that I have actually that I haven't used yet, that's gonna be my, I don't know, like 2019 part two one maybe. Uh, it, it has coil binding, so you also have the option to have coil binding. And I think it's like bamboo or something, but they're the same price and I'm sure it's just as good as this one. It, it really makes a difference to have a fabulous notebook. And I take this thing with me everywhere I go. And then, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So the secrets to being organized aren't glamorous. There, there isn't like a really complex answer to, to, how, to how to be organized on a day-to-day -day basis. There's lots I could say on the topic. But for now, the simplest thing that I can recommend to you and something that makes a huge difference for me is just keeping everything all in one place. The only other exception maybe um, is if you're doing any type of creative work, uh, there are a lot of other things that I could talk about. I've said that like five times. There are a lot of things I could talk about. Um, and depending on how much you guys care about discussions on organization and time management and stuff. But I actually have separate notebooks that I use for writing lyrics and music. I don't keep that in this main notebook. The reason being is just I like having all of my music in one place. Again, for, for similar reasons, I don't want to have to flip through something to, to find something. And my music notebooks tend to last a lot longer. Like, I, I don't fill a music notebook in a year. <laughs> Definitely, like, nowhere close to that. So, um, yeah, sometimes, depending on, like, what other things you have going on in your life, it's nice to have really dedicated notebooks. But, again, if you, ha if you get too many dedicated notebooks, it gets spread too thin. And then all of a sudden, you're out and about, and you don't have the notebook you need with you. Which is why I like having just, like, a uniform, one notebook to rule them all kind of situation. The other exception that I'll, I'll make to that is... I have, I don't know if you can see the video, but I have a stack of binders up here and these are for like weird little random projects that I get interested in. So anytime that I'm doing something like gardening, I'll make a gardening binder and that's where I'll like, I'll put photocopies of stuff that maybe I've written in my main notebook that I want to put together or I'll like take notes from books I'm reading. Um, this is a, I mentioned this, this is a habit training. It's actually a Charlotte Mason philosophy who is a child, edu like a childhood educator, but I like the idea of habit training as an adult. Um, just the idea of becoming a better person by building good habits. So I basically read through some books and I took some notes and I photocopied some notes. I have like some checklists back here. So this kind of has its own dedicated binder that sits on my shelf and I have that for a variety of different subjects. Basically, anytime I get obsessed with something, like a topic of any kind, I have these binders for like my history exams for piano that I've done, my harmony exams too. Basically anything that I've gotten really, really into, um, I have a binder for. And I find this to be like a really fun, I just like, like this is something I could keep digitally, but I just really like having it on the shelf. So I could just, I don't know, there's something about it. I'm not a fully digital person, I guess. I, I just, yeah, I like the, I like the feel of it in my hands. Anyway, so that's just another idea. Um, I don't want to get too off topic though. Get a notebook, use a notebook, make sure it's a good notebook. I feel like that's how I would summarize this video, which makes everything seem very 
plain and simple, but hopefully you found this helpful. And again, let me know if you are interested in um, more organizational stuff because I really love talking about this. Um, this is the kind of thing that I'll like rant about to my husband and then his eyes start to glaze over and he's like, yeah, sure, organization. He's, he, we're the opposite in this regard. He hates lists. He like, he, he resists making lists. Um, I have to, I have to keep working to convert him on that one. Actually, some of the lists in there are ones that he wrote and he enjoyed them. So I shouldn't make grand proclamations like he hates all lists, but yeah. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye guys.